What's up, Bishop Moore? JP Kuhlman here. So a couple years ago when I was in high school, I used to have, I was on this traveling basketball team and we'd have these different basketball tournaments throughout the, pretty much the Southeast and the East Coast. And we'd go to different states and different cities for these basketball trips, which were a lot of fun and we loved doing it. Um, but my dad made me do something before I went on every one of these trips. This, this was before GPS, before you could like type in your phone an address and be there in two seconds. But he made me go to the computer print out the map quest directions to the nearest Catholic church in that city or town that we were going to. And it wasn't just one church. He made me pick out two churches and to have the list of mass times for those churches before I could go on the trip. And he would call the coach and be like, hey, listen, JP's got the map quest. He's got the mass times. Make sure he gets to mass on Sunday. If he doesn't get to mass on Sunday, he's never going on another basketball trip with you guys again. So those coaches made sure we, we made it to mass every time. But it's amazing to look back on that and think that like how I'm, I was always really embarrassed because I would go up to the coach and say like, listen, my dad's making me do this. Like we got to go to church on Sunday. And uh, I remember going to these towns in like Mississippi and North Carolina and Georgia and like the Bible Belt, you know, and, uh, and it, sometimes there was a Catholic church every 30 miles. So we had to drive a while to get to church. And sometimes the team was doing something a lot of fun, like playing in the pool after a game or uh, doing something fun in between games. And we had to go away, leave, leave the team to go to mass. And I remember just being embarrassed and just thinking like, oh, dad, like, can't I just give mass this one time? But looking back on that and seeing the fruit that that's born in my own heart, my own spiritual life, and realizing that my dad was planting seeds there. He was planting seeds in my heart of how central and how important the Mass is, how important the Eucharist is to our spiritual lives, to our lives as Christians. And I, I, every time I talk to my dad or my mom about those things, I say thank you. You know, thank you for teaching us and showing us how important the Eucharist is in our life, how it's the source and summit of our faith, but also the source and summit of the life and the joy we have in our hearts as Christians. And you know, moving on after high school and into college, I started to go deeper in my walk with Christ. I started to realize why the Mass, why the Eucharist is so important. In my own heart, it started to hit home. And I remember there was a quote I read early on in college, and it stayed with me ever since. It's from Archbishop Fulton Sheen. He said, the greatest love story ever told is contained in a tiny white host. So the greatest love story ever to told. And up to that point, I never thought of the Eucharist as a love story. I never thought about the Mass as a love story because we talk about the Mass in so many ways. And most fully, it's the sacrifice, this offering of the Son to the Father, this offering of, that Christ gave when he died on the cross, offering, offering his entire self to God the Father, and us entering into that sacrifice, us entering in with our lives, our hearts, everything we're carrying in our lives, with that offering of Christ to the Father and making it beautiful, making it holy to give to God the Father. And that's what the Mass is. So it's not about what we get out of it, but it's what we offer in this act of worship to God. But it's also this love story, this love story that God, who is so much greater than us, He doesn't need us, He doesn't need a relationship with us, but out of sheer goodness, He chooses to come to us in a way that we can receive Him, in the most humble of ways, just like He became a baby in Bethlehem, and was born in a manger, this feeding trough for animals. Just like he died this humiliating death on the cross as a criminal, naked and made fun of and humiliated in front of everybody, he becomes small for us in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist, in this what looks like a piece of bread. It's not about a God who's distant. It's not about a God who's far off telling us what to do or keeping track of what we're doing. But he's a God that pours out himself for us. He's a God who pours out his heart constantly and again and again gives himself to us most fully in the Eucharist, in the sacrament that's the center of our faith. So as we go back to Mass in these coming days, in these coming weeks, may we enter more deeply into that love story. May we enter more deeply into this union with Christ that he gives to us so deeply and intimately in the Eucharist. And may we always see with those eyes of faith, trusting and knowing with our hearts that it truly is God, that it truly is Christ, body and blood, soul and divinity, poured out for us, for our good, for our life, so that we can share in his.